Barca. My name is Simon Dyson. I'm a professor of applied sociology at De Montfort University in the UK. I want to share with you how we devised a guide to school policy for young people living with sickle cell. Where newborn screening for sickle cell is in place, the majority of young people with sickle cell disease can live to school age and indeed into adulthood. Our concern was that the gains made by newborn screening might be lost if young people with sickle cell did not get the right support at school. Our research was funded by a Government Research Council in the UK, the Economic and Social Research Council. The research looked at the experiences of 569 young people with sickle cell disease and has been published in peer-reviewed journals. It is vital that young people with sickle cell disease are given the opportunity to have the best education they can. However, our research found that they missed a great deal of time from school and that the young people with sickle cell disease felt that they were not helped to catch up the lessons that they had missed. Young people with sickle cell disease cannot concentrate urine as readily and need to pass large quantities of dilute urine, so requiring to go to the toilet more frequently. But 57% of our respondents said that their teacher had prevented this. The strong advice of doctors is for people with sickle cell disease to keep well hydrated and drink plenty of water. But again, nearly half of the young people said that their teacher had stopped them from drinking water in class. Young people with sickle cell disease need to take exercise to remain healthy, as we all do, but strenuous exercise to exhaustion is not good for someone with sickle cell disease. Yet, over a third of young people with sickle cell said that they had been forced to undertake unsuitable exercise at school. Finally, the main type of sickle cell disease is called sickle cell anemia. The clue is in the name. People with anemia will be tired, lethargic and find it difficult to concentrate. Unfortunately, over a third said that they had been accused by their teacher of being lazy when in fact they were tired from their anemia. Perhaps surprisingly, our research also found that simply giving teachers information about sickle cell disease was necessary but not sufficient to ensure good support for young people with sickle cell at school. We also found that young people with sickle cell did not like support that drew attention to them as different from their peers. They wanted to blend in with their classmates. We therefore needed an approach that recognised these factors. We found that the most effective actions were to introduce strong school policies that supported the young person with sickle cell disease but without drawing attention to them as different from others. For example, one school had an evening catch-up session with a teacher present so that any child who missed school for any reason was enabled to catch up. The young person with sickle cell was helped to make up the schoolwork they had missed but was not made to feel different from their peers. Other examples of good practice are included in the Guide to School Policy and are highlighted in green. The guide has been produced as an open education document. This means it is intended to be adapted and used by others without charge. The guide has been adapted to the Nigerian context by Nigerian education experts, community workers, doctors and nurse counsellors. On the basis of experiences in Nigeria, new sections on environmental cleanups to reduce malaria, on ensuring school buildings are built on one level, and on the benefits of peer-to-peer -peer support programs in schools have been added. It has been translated into Hausa, Yoruba and Igbo by professional translation services. Free, downloadable copies of the guides in Hausa, Yoruba and Igbo, as well as the English language Nigerian version, are available from the school website. Further details of the research underpinning the guide is available at www.sicklecelleducation.com.